Welcome to CAD Tutorials and in this video I'll be covering practice problem 4.9. Now given this circuit we are asked to find the Thorbenin equivalent um, to the left of the terminals or of this particular circuit. Right. So let's start by finding what can we start with. Let's start with VTH. Start with VTH. Right. So VTH is obviously indicated uh, at this point, so VTH is essentially the voltage which is across this 4 ohm resistor or the voltage at this node or at this point, right? So let's proceed to find VTH. What can we do? What can we do? The simplest way which I see or the simplest way which I'd go for is to do nodal analysis. Let's name this node V, right? So do nodal analysis at node V. So node V we'd actually have V subtract 6 divided by 5 um, and then we have negative 1.5 Ix then we'd have plus V divided by 7 the 7 comes from 3 plus 4 as current would flow this way and none in that direction so all of this is V between that point and ground we have V over there that's why we have V divided by 3 plus 4, which is 7, is equal to 0. Now, since this is our V divided by 7 and Ix is indicated in that path, then we know for sure that Ix is equal to that same current. So this is a current due to Ohm's law, V is equal to IR. So I is equal to V divided by R. So this is the voltage divided by R. So Ix is essentially also equals to V divided by 7. Right. So now in this equation we have Ix. So you can just substitute what we just found now. Quickly, sorry. So I have V subtract 6 divided by 5, subtract 1.5, multiply by V divided by 7 plus uh, V divided by 7 is equal to 0. So now let's uh, proceed to find V. So you can multiply all of this by 35. This will give us uh, 7V subtract 42 um, subtract 5 multiplied by 1.5 V and then plus 5 V is equal to 0. Now um, solving or simplifying all of this will give us the following. We have 7 V subtract 7.5 plus 5 V is equal to 42. Right? So this is negative 0 0.5 added to that. It's going to be 4.5 V is equal to 42. Divide both sides by 4.5. V is therefore equals to, let me punch this quickly into your calculator. V is therefore equals to, uh, this is V. Let me see. So 42 divided by 4.5. It's a um, 9.333 recurring volts. Now, this is our V, which we found. And we know for sure that this, this Ix is V divided by 7. And since this is Ix going through the 3 and the 4, and we said that VTH is across the 4 ohms, then we, we know for sure that VTH is equal to 4 Ix, which is equal to 4, since Ix is V over 7, V divided by 7, so Vth is essentially equals to 4 multiplied by this 9.333 which we found, divided by 7, and Vth is therefore equals to, so this answer, divided by 7, and then multiplied by 4, which means VTH is equal to 5.333 recurring volts. And that is your answer for VTH. That is how you'd find VTH. Now we're going to move on to find RTH, which is the, the Venin uh, equivalent resistance. Now to find that, what we basically do is we, we remove all independent sources which are in sight or in the circuit and then proceed to find RTH. Now in the circuit, as you would have noticed, we actually have a 
in the circuit, we actually have a independent source and a dependent source. Now the dependent source in introduces a new method. So removing the removing the independent source, which was a faulty source of value six volts, we'll have a short circuit where it was, and then everything else would be uh, as it was in the circuit, and the dependent source stays intact. So since the dependent source stays intact, then we draw it again, and we have everything as it was. Still have IX indicated there, and we have that same 4 ohm resistor there, and the terminals. Now since this is the second case as described in the textbook, we are going to actually introduce a test source of value 1 volt, right? And then IO, which means uh, we're going to say RTH is actually equals using Ohm's law is equals to our VO divided by IO, where this VO is actually the test source, which we set to 1 volt, right? So our task is actually finding IO, and then after finding IO, since VO is already 1, as we stated, or as we assumed, or as we chose to use, our RTH is actually going to be equals to 1 divided by IO. So now let's proceed to find IO. Then after finding IO, this is basically what we're going to do, right? So that is fine. Let's proceed. So what can we do? What can we do? What can we do? I I'd say that the best way or the simplest way to to go with this would be to use uh, basically anything which you are comfortable with, right? Anything, anything which you're comfortable with. So you can use a uh, source transformation since you have this uh, resistor, which is in parallel with that. So that's one option. And then continue doing a source transformation along all of this and do mesh analysis. Or you can do a uh, nodal analysis, which I like using. So let's use nodal analysis. This here, since we have a voltage source and nothing else in that path, this is also one volt. This node voltage is one volt as well. And here, let's label this V. Let's call that V. So at that node, we have V. So at node V, let's form an equation. Let's form a node equation. I'm going to have V divided by, let's see. I'm going to have V divided by 5. I'm going to have negative 1.5 IX. We are going to have V subtract 1 divided by at this point, V subtract 1 divided by 3 is equal to 0. This is for node V. Now, this IX is indicated in this direction, which we just defined as V subtract 1 divided by 3, right? So, therefore, IX is equal to V subtract 1 divided by 3. That is a relationship which we find from just looking at the circuit and looking at what is happening in this port. So find the potential difference, which is the difference between the two nodes, and then divide by the resistor value, which is in that path. And that's how we found Ix is equal to V subtract 1 divided by 3. So now we'll proceed to, um, to find the value of V. So we now know what Ix is, so we can substitute it there, right? So we have V divided by 5, subtract 1.5, and then substitute our Ix and write it in terms of V, so we can only have V in the equation to solve. So we can multiply through by 15, right? Multiplying through by 15, we are going to have 3V subtract 5 multiplied by 1.5, V subtract 1, and then we're going to have plus 5V subtract 5 is equal to 0. So here we, this is uh, 7.5, so we're going to have 3V subtract 7.5V plus 7.5 plus 5V subtract 5 is equal to 0. So adding all of these up, we have uh, 3 subtract that, which is negative 4.5. Added to that, we're going to have 0.5V. And then taking this to the other side of the negative sign, this is what we're basically going to have. So we're going to divide both sides by that. And therefore, we're going to say V is equal to... Um, negative, what's this, negative 7.5 divided by 
and the answer to that is uh, negative 15 we have negative 15 now if you look here I made a slight math error so if you look at this this is 7.5 and that is negative 5 I only consider the 7.5 right so it's actually going to be 7.5 subtract 5 which is 2.5 taking it to the other side it's going to be negative 2.5 right and the negative 2.5 divided by that is actually going to be negative 5 right so we're actually going to have v as negative 5 volts so we now proceed to find io we now have v let's find io so we're now at the one volt node which is this node so basically going to say one subtract v divided by three one subtract v divided by three which is the resistor which is in that path and then we're going to say plus one over four which is plus one over four and then finally we're going to say negative io because it goes into the node is equal to zero now multiplying this by let's say 12 right you're gonna have 4 subtract 4 v plus 3 subtract io is equal to zero and therefore io is equals to um 4 subtract 4 v plus 3 so io is equal to 4 subtract 4 multiplied by negative 5 plus 3 right so i always used to 4 and this is 20 24 27 right 27 amperes but rth is equals to vo divided by io which is equals to 1 over 27 and rth punching that into a calculator 1 divided by 27 Now, since we multiplied the multiplied everything by 12, but forgot to multiply the IO by 12. So multiplying the IO by 12 as well, we have 12 there, we have 12 there, we have 12 there. So IO is essentially going to be equals to 27 divided by 12. I apologize for these mistakes. It's 4 a.m. And yeah, so 27 divided by 12. So we have that. So RCH is essentially equals to 1 divided by 27 over 12, which is equals to 12 divided by 27. And punching that into a calculator to simplify this, 12 divided by 27 should give you 444.44 uh, milliohms. And that is your RTH.